Welcome back. When last we met, I had just filled the anchor roller holes that I had drilled where one had missed and refilled them. Uh, I came back today to discover that there must have been a bubble or something in the epoxy, but I've got these uh, two little divots. They're only, only a half inch deep or so, but I can't drill without filling them. So I'm going to fill them and proceed to go work on other things. And the other things that I'm going to work on today is I'm going to start working on my backing plates. I'm going to use these ones that aren't delaminated. So I'm going to fit them, drill them, uh, get them ready to attach to the hull. And if I have enough time, I'll actually attach them to the hull. And I'm also working on the stem fitting, stem fitting project. This is the old stem fitting. It uh, sits underneath the bowsprit attached to the stem and a eye bolt, stainless steel eye bo bolt goes through the tang here and up through the bowsprit and there's a an eye on top of it that the forestay attaches to for the, the cutter, cutter stay. This is one of the many pieces that I wanted to remove because it clearly has been butchered a little bit. Didn't look very good. So I had this manufactured, looks much, much better, thicker and so on. Uh, one of the first things I discovered on it was that the holes don't line up. The new one was made according to the plan. And I'm not sure how or why this one was made the way it was, but the holes aren't going to line up. And I've been fighting with drilling holes long enough. So I've got enough experience drilling holes to think to myself, I'm not going to fight with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the holes that are on the stem of the boat with epoxy. And when the time comes to mount the bowsprit on it, I will use this as a template for the new holes and drill them through this as a template. So before I can do that, I need to clean up the stem of the boat itself. It's quite a mess. Come have a look. So this is the bow or the stem of the boat where the stem fitting used to sit. And as you can see, in rather rough condition, the gel coat has uh, spider cracks all through it, and the uh, polysulfide that they used was not applied evenly. I've already ground this down, and I will continue to take that down. I'm not going to go too far with it, just enough to take the old crap off, and I'll probably put a little bit on there and bear it in. Um, but I'm going to fill these holes. So that's what I'm doing right now. has come to drill the backing plates out. I had to get a wee bit creative to rig the jig up. The drill bit size is 11 30 seconds, which is a little odd, but it is what it is. And uh, in order to align the holes within the circle, I mounted the, I mounted the through hole and the flange, turned the through hole in nice and tight and I'm using two black backing plates to give it the space it needs to hold down tight. Fortunately, when I when I put the the backside down on the the table of the drill press, it's three eighths of an inch high. So I'm using the old laminate piece that I cut the black and backing plates out of to hold my jig up high enough so that it sits flat. And then to keep them aligned, I'm using this nail and this pen in the holes I've already drilled. I know it's not high tech. <laughs> the machine is out there probably having conniption fits, but you know what? If it looks stupid, but it works, it's not stupid. So this is the last one for this pair.
And there you have it. Backing plates with perfectly aligned holes. Well, I'm actually going to attempt a test fitting of the Seacox and backing plates. If it goes well, I think I am going to go ahead and mount them. So I've got three of the one and a half inch plates that I can work with today. And then I'll have to wait for the new material to arrive to have cut for the other two one and a half inch and the other two one inch plates. But for today, this will give me a good idea of, of how my system is going to work. So in order to hold the fitting on the outside of the boat, the actual through hull, I put it up into the hole that I recessed and I wedged it in place with an oar. There's the old oar. And I just jammed it up into the fitting. Now I'm going to go up inside the boat and put the inside part on. So welcome back to the head again. It's a very cramped and tight space, but there's some good room in here for mounting the seacock. So that's the first one I'm going to attempt. It's here in the head. And there you can see the through hull poking through. The oar <laughs> jammed up inside it. That should stay nicely in place. And let's see how this works. Uh, well, there's a problem right there, huh? This is a test. If it had been the real thing, we'd be set back a bit. But this was only a test. So I moved my through hull to the other hole. There it is. Well, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go inside. I don't have an 11 32nd inch bolt, but I'm going to go inside and grab my nail that I used and put it through that hole there. It has conveniently lined itself up perfectly. So I'm going to put my bolt in there and then I'm going to use my through hole tool, to tighten that down and uh, see what it looks like. Stand by. It's been a while since you've seen this bad boy, but this bad boy has been quietly and patiently waiting in the locker to be put back into use. And today, it's being put back into use. 